and welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for some Aurelia Jarvan. That's right, finding new ways to play Aurelia. Because right now it's just basically Aurelia Zier as the popular deck. Uh, we did play Aurelia Talia the other day and did pretty well with that. But now we're playing another new champion with Aurelia. We got Aurelia Jarvan. So we're going to start off with a lot of the same Ionia cards that we have in the Aurelia Azir deck. Um, you know, Dancing Droplet with um, some recall cards to be able to help uh, get some card advantage in. Um, but we're not going we're not going all of this, the same, right? Like we're not playing um, the, the, the ones that get really big. Sparring Student, Green Glade Duo. Um, but instead, instead of those, we got some like some Demacia cards that can give us some Challenger, give us some interaction, Fleet Feather Tracker, um, Laurent Protégé. We're also playing Vanguard Redeemer, and this was something that I, that uh, whenever I saw this donation deck list, I was pretty excited about. Because if, if we have our Blade Dances die, now the Blade Dances get obliterated if they don't get blocked. But if our opponents block them and they die, then boom, that enables Vanguard Redeemer. So it should be, because, you know, Blade Dances get blocked quite a bit, so it should be fairly easy to enable Vanguard Redeemer. And Vanguard Redeemer is a summon effect, and it's three mana. So that means it works perfectly with Retreat Returns. There's three Retreat Returns in here where um, you can return either Vanguard Redeemer or Laurent Protégé or Aurelia. Like the, we have juicy return targets for Retreat Return. All right, then moving on, we got Homecoming for some interaction. Same with One Concerted Strike, you know, um, you know, to be able to bounce stuff again and, and again get the card advantage with bouncing the droplet, um, hopefully with those. And then our top end, Screeching Dragon, Jarvan, and a King Jarvan. So we do, we do have the 24 mana combo of Play King Jarvan, bounce it with Homecoming, <laughs> uh, then play your regular Jarvan also, then bounce your King Jarvan with, home, with Homecoming, and then replay your King Jarvan, and then get the Challenger and Scout for just 24 low mana <laughs> to do all that. Um, but Screeching Dragon, Jarvan, and Laurent Protégé should all be surviving attacks as far as leveling up Jarvan is concerned. Um, how these two, if you're wondering, like, well, how does, like, the blades, like, whenever you blade dance, these blades are always just going to die. They're not going to survive damage. So like they're not going to level up Jarvan. So how do those work, really work together? Well, if you have Aurelia making your flawless duet, you can spend one spell mana to blade dance, and then Jarvan comes into play, challenging right there. So you can have like Jarvan basically attack twice in the round because it can come in uh, with the with the blade dances, and then be able to attack again after that. So that's kind of what that's doing. All right, anyway, let's go ahead and give it a try. Hopefully, we can get a couple of wins. And we're going to play it on over in ranked. Zoe Aphelios. This deck's great. We don't see this deck too much anymore. Yes. Come here, pup. Come here. Stop scratching me. <clears throat> okay, so we're going to mulligan King Jarvan. And keep the rest. Uh, Korek says this was his first expect expansion uh, expedition deck from the expansion. So first expedition deck from the expansion. You got seven wins with it. Awesome. Good, not Zoe. That's good. Glad not Zoe. I kind of want to pass so I can have Protégé plus Sharp Sight, but nope, they just open attack now. So I'm going to have to play this and Sharp Sight this thing. Alright, so it really is almost leveled up. Only needs 11 more attacks to go. Zoe's. I'm not sure exactly what I'm doing with my spell mana, but I 
kind of feel like saving spell mana. Alright, figured it out. Break their spirits and their swords. Run them hardly fair. So they don't want to trade two ones. That's fairly interesting. What's that hand looking like over there? This is a, a tough turn for me. Like, I could just slam down Screeching Dragon, but I'd like to have the Dancing Drop in play for like this Retreat Return and Homecoming. Like, I could see them just getting Equinox there. Like, also, like I play Screeching Dragon. This was Equinox. The Equinox is Screeching Dragon. I guess I'd have Retreat Return for that. Never forgive myself. Lunari, rise. So now you want to trade? I didn't want to trade before. You're all tied up. So obviously this wasn't ideal. Well, I called that. There's no reason not to attack with that Screeching Dragon. I should have attacked with it as well. I guess Homecoming is the reason not to attack with that. But I can't really Blade Dance in front of a 5-2 Lifesteal. I guess they had... I guess I could have right there. They have infinite life, but... We'll just save... Again, save Spell Mana. Saving Spell Mana, good. Because, yeah, now that we save Spell Mana, now I can Homecoming and Screeching Dragon this round. Both... I kind of just want to let it really die. Yeah, you can die. That's fine. How will my people remember me? Yeah, Thresh Nasus is considered a, that's a mid range deck. It's an incredibly good mid range deck, but yeah, because it it doesn't just have like one. It's not trying to do like the same aggressive game plan every single day. Like it, it can it can have an extremely aggressive opener, but it can also play the control role. Um, with Thresh and controlling the board and having lots of card draw and it can play a slow game as well. So yeah, it's a it's it's really good at what it does, but yeah, it's a it's a mid-range deck. But a, a mid-range deck that can like kill people on like round 4 is pretty crazy, <laughs> but it can. Run them through. Hard to bear. Stand with your king. No quarter. We have our combo set up. It's only 24 mana. We've spent 13 of it so far. We played Jarvan, King Jarvan. We drew Jarvan, played Jarvan. Now we need a homecoming back our King Jarvan, play it again. We're getting our combo set up.
So I think that's their second star shaping, right? So they have two big celestial cards in hand? Yes. Okay, that's something to keep an eye out on. That seems like a big celestial. That's not what I want to happen. I guess the slow spell has to happen first. It wouldn't get a barrier no matter what, because it's not going to challenge. Well, I guess it, it would have if I would have done this home, home, homecoming first, but I'm just I'm playing that card to get rid of the spell shield so that then I can homecoming. When I'm recall, draw a card. Alright, so it's going to just draw a card anyway. So... That question is, like, you know, am I using this lead and follow on the Jarvan? Or am I letting that thing take six? I think I maybe just let that thing take six. Act with conviction. <clears throat> Swiftly. If I let it take six, I can play Screeching Dragon right here and have Screeching Dragon challenge it. Because otherwise... I'm not sure how I'm killing that thing. Not gonna have the attack token for really uh So they still have one very expensive celestial card in hand. Bask in her radiant blessing. They know about that card, of course. Zoe Nefelios. I'm gonna try drawing another card. Redeemer? I had something die this round. It's a different spacey sketcher, not the one that we knew about. And here's where I'd paint my constellation. Okay. Remember the fall. Just go infinite. Remember our ancestors, and fight for those who came before us! Where they fall, freedom grows. I should have played the droplet first. They shouldn't be blocking either of these. You wouldn't think. The brighter my light, the stronger your shadow. I 
don't want to play the other droplet because I want to be able to have the room for the ribbon dance. And now we have this blade surge on this round to protect Aurelia like they were going to challenge Aurelia. We got to switch it out. I could definitely see them blocking here to try to bait my blade surge. Like block with the 2-2. Two -two. That's probably what I would do if I were them. So they have Severum there. We still know they have a great Celestial. That's probably the big Celestial right there. Like one of these two is an expensive Celestial. Spilled paint is just accidental art. Yep. Hopefully it's all units. I guess not all. But all cheaper units. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what it could be that would be good for us. Droplet. Take your place. Which I'm happy with that, of course. I got another droplet. Not as happy about that. But to be honest, the good part about all of this is they just used a bunch of they just used eight mana on two cards that are not any of those celestials they just made they just made like six celestials and just spent eight mana our ancestors are watching how oh. redeemer how do you keep drawing droplet we need something better than droplet yeah so that was kind of a wasted living legend so that was the good part wow they had such good cards they had Cosmic Inspiration? And they did that nonsense instead? King Jarvan is basically a dancing droplet, right? You just put it back in your hand and draw a new card. I want to do this before they play like a stun moon weapon or deal three damage moon weapon. Yeah, it's just a seven mana droplet, but it's it draws a champion. Homecoming King Jarvan combo. That a pretty sweet combo. Unfortunately, Redeemers are just drawing as droplets, but. How will I respond? It's down to two. I can use both blade surges to put them down to one. Right, I could get I could get like that four the four or five screeching dragon away from that and put them down to one. Why would you not just do three to the four three? Oh, shit. 
Oh yeah, I guess it just wouldn't have worked if I would have just put Aurelia there, because it's not a follower. Right, right, right. It's not three to any units, just followers. Right, so I just didn't I didn't even need this King Jarwin to take two damage. Right, right. My bad, my bad. Targon never dies. Can't ever kill Targon. And of course, the, the Blade Surge was fleeting, right? So like, it, all I did was, it's not like I could have saved that Blade Surge for this round. It was fleeting. What if Blade Surge wasn't fleeting? I guess that's game. Yeah, that's just game over. GG's. Sound the retreat. We are not lost yet. Well, that's what that deck does. It's it's certainly designed to play a late game. I was, I was impressed with how late of a game we were able to play with that game, you know, like with that deck. Um, you know, they had, they had Zoe round round two and round three, and then they had Veil Temple, and, you know, like they had a, a good hand, and that's what their deck does. You know, like with multiple star shapings, they play a late game. Good looking hand. This is definitely a good homecoming matchup with them having expensive dragons. We want to bounce them, put them back in their hand, and we also want to help control the board. I like that retreat return draw. Single combat's gonna be a problem, but you know, if they have that. Well, that's just how it is. Hopefully they don't. Like I could We could try to retreat return to bait out single combat first, but that's just that could be just so poor if they don't have it, but unfortunately they do have it. So that's too bad. Yeah, good hand opponent. Your fury is nothing against mine. So I'm having them waste their turn. Um, putting new cards out there. But as with many Demacia decks, whenever you're playing decks with Challenger, the deck that goes bigger is going to win. That was a, a huge... That was a huge uh, single combat that they had. Perfect hand. Good game. Does 
does not get any better than that. All right, GG's. If that homecoming resolves, though, like we're in a, a, a good situation, right? Because then they have to like spend an entire more another turn on the Shivana. Like we're in a good situation if that homecoming resolves. But the homecoming didn't resolve, so. Okay, so we'll be able to save spell mana this round for Sharp Sight. Could block the 1-1, one, one, but that doesn't feel worth it. Not whenever I'm holding Homecoming. Every blade, every beat in its place. The party has arrived. I suppose I prefer a clown to a butcher. Time for the money makers. Axe with your name on it. All right, we got them to block the blade. Very good. That's pretty nice getting Jarvan out of here. A line around me. Okay, so starting off good. But we're actually kind of even, right? Like, we both have four cards in hand. They got an extra mana, an extra unit. I guess I should block first. I guess if I pass, they probably pass. Because I did that, but that's only wasting one mana. That's fine. Four, one, two, three, four. Okay. So no blade dance this round. Well, let's see. If I went to homecoming. So I may not be able to do a second Flea Feather Tracker. Should be one one Flea Feather Tracker in Homecoming. Time for the main event. Would they just discard? I think they had a spinning axe left, right? I'll give you to the counter. Wait that. I was hoping they were, they're like if we could wait on that, like if they had like an augmented experimenter that empties their hand, then we bounce and put Jinx back in their hand, and they discard the Jinx <laughs> to the augmented experimenter ability. That would have been cool. My shield is yours. All right, so they should have a Draven coming up. All right, I think one of those is a Draven, right? Because of his biggest fan. What did they... What did they rummage away? Urchin and Jinx? They rummaged away another Jinx? That's interesting. This droplet's <laughs> so annoying. Just, just goes away. All right, so I had nine out of twelve. So one flawless duet does not level up. No. Oh, I don't have the mana for a redeemer. So 
So kind of assuming they are going to play a uh, Super Mega Death Rocket this round. And so just kind of having those things go away. So I could have passed and had them play it first to not take the one damage on the Redeemer, but it's just pretty risky because if I pass and I have all that mana, like, they don't have to play that. Right then. Redeemer does love to draw a Dancing Droplet. Oh, so is this, yeah, is this their only Jinx left in their deck? Did they have a Jinxes get excited that fizzled earlier? Strength and grace, beauty in the and how do we keep drawing all these droplets in the late game? Plan, just made it. It's like that's like our only card or something. Close my eyes, make it fair. These will not take long. Now close my eyes, make it fair. Turn the tide of war. Uh, it's Draven time. Yeah, we do. We have drawn like all three droplets every game. I guess you know, not the not the middle game, but like the first game that went a while, and then this game, like we just draw, draw all the droplets. And this was a reason not to play these cards. I need that to work. Good. So if that is the last Jinx, we have a chance. May not be the best chance, but we have a chance. We need to like you know draw something that doesn't cost one or two mana, <laughs> right? We need to draw something else. Yeah, maybe I should just be, you know, blocking next round and then doing this, but... Yay, Screeching Dragon. That's what I wanted to find, was something like a Screeching Dragon. Something that can really block. Who does not know the name Laurent? We are dead to an open attack. Well, I guess not quite. Now we're cooking. Yep, there you are. All right, zero and three. So yeah, I never claimed this deck would be the best deck ever, but it, it does some stuff. It does some stuff. We see we've seen some pretty neat synergies in here. Closing out games has been a problem. We really haven't had very much Jarvan. The only Jarvan we've had is from King Jarvan drawing it. Alright, Misfortune Gangplank. Another fast aggro deck. Homecoming works with Droplet, but they don't, like, besides Gangplank, they don't really have that great of stuff for that. I'm probably blocking with the Droplet early. I have my like, yeah, like, I, I want to trade Droplet off, because, like, they were going to have, like, the, the one mana cards. We did get halfway through the combo. Um, sure, Nikant, so... Uh, yeah, so for if you want your deck played on stream, it's either a $10 donation 
or 20,000 channel points. That's my cue. One or two, that's, that's how I do the donation decks from viewers. Um, but you can also, if you'd like to put your list in the chat with like the code, I can save it on my, I have like a, a sheet, like a spreadsheet of just um, random decks of like to maybe play at some point. And so I can put that deck on there if you like. Um, and a no, no promise of like when, when I'll get to it or if I'll get to it, but you know, maybe I'll get to it later. I have, I'm pretty full on donation decks right now. I have like close to 20. So the next week or two is going to be lots of donation decks. Okay. Um, I guess I get, I honestly don't hate just playing redeemer and blocking. I know I'm not getting any value out of the redeemer. But, you know, trading one for one, it hurts, right? It hurts to do it. <laughs> I would like to draw a card off the Redeemer, but it's probably just sometimes you gotta swallow your pride and take the trade. Nothing like a stink of blood and sweat. Spin around, throw it down. Who's that you got there? Where's my axe? Yeah, we, we did donation deck prices go. We had them go up today. We decided cause just because I, I just get so many. I'm getting way too many donation decks these days. <laughs> and so decided to put the channel point price up on them. I'm just getting too many. And yeah, it's, it's basically because like the, once the once the predictions thing started, then people would have more points. Up. Hey, Fire Penguin. And so yeah, that's what chat. We talked it over in chat earlier and decided to raise it to, to twenty thousand and see, because hoping that also kind of incentivizes. Showtime. We'll see if they. I doubt they block, but if they block, then you know, then it would redeem her. But uh, if that would it Watch me now. potentially incentivize people to uh, do money donations, because basically. Like, 95% of the donation decks I do or more are, are just channel points and not uh, with money. So I'm feeling pretty good about this. That's already two decimates. We're controlling the board. We did a very good job controlling the board this game. I think we're getting a win. I think we're getting a win. Stand with me, brothers and sisters. So you may ask why cast King Jarvan there? Because I wanted to. Or why cast just regular Jarvan there? Because I wanted to. No, don't get to cast Jarvan that often. And that should be game. Alright, one and four. Or one and three. Okay, we can still get a two three. Raise our banners. Demacia prevails. Thanks, Fire Penguin. Thanks for checking out the stream after watching the YouTube videos. I appreciate that. Okay, we can still end today on a positive note because you, can't, you can't go lower than zero, right? So like those losses in a row didn't matter. Yeah, welcome, welcome to the chill stream. That's us. Okay. Finishing where we started. I think our 
No, it was not our first match. It was not against this. Never mind. Ooh, they went full mulligan. Just didn't really have anything for the Bright Seal Protector to do, and kind of wanted to look for a little bit more power. We got our Zoe blocker. That's what Droplet is. Droplet's the Zoe blocker. Yep, this is going to be the last game of the day. This is usually about the time that we finish each day. So we do, you know, we have our schedule over here. We do five games with each deck. Our stream started about five hours ago. And uh, this is our last game today. And so that's the normal time of like starting each day is whatever time zone you're in five hours ago is whenever I, I start normally. Mm. 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 Around me. They can definitely hush block Aurelia. You yeah, know, looks like that's what they're gonna do. I do have like the other Aurelia. So that's alright, you know, I trade a three mana removal spell for my three man champion plus that extra card they created. That's not the worst thing ever. Yeah, I also play my decks during stream. Um, I'd say my normal stream is usually like two or three donation decks and one or two of my decks. But right now I'm kind of backed up on the donation decks and, and I've been playing some donation decks recently. Right now, but... Um, that's what I'd say is the normal stream now. Uh, we also have like Rank Up Sundays, where I don't usually play very many donation decks on Rank Up Sundays. And we have um, Champion Spotlight Night, which was last night. Wednesday Wednesday night, I have the night stream that like starts like right at this time on Wednesdays. And that I we uh, roll the dice, pick a random champion to showcase. Yesterday it was Heimerdinger. And that one I, I build ranked decks and don't really do donation decks on, on that day. Okay. So where are you at? You're at six. So this is gonna be seven, eight. Basically doing this to level up Aurelia. Because now we'll have, we have to have Aurelia attack last. So Aurelia will be the 12th. So then Aurelia will create the Blade Surge. It definitely makes sense to. Watch me now. Yep, I'll get the blade search from that. The definitely makes sense to put the lifesteal unit first. Yeah, meme tier Monday I, I do usually is like filled with donation decks. Um, yeah, there's lots of people have meme tier donation decks. That's usually almost always all uh, donation decks. Yeah, and I, I also build decks too, and that's that happens a lot of times that people will, will uh, donate for a deck idea for me to build and. I'm happy to do that. That's fairly common. So a bunch of cheap cards. Nothing for me to homecoming right now. Shoulder step, blade sharpen, plant that lead foot. Don't worry, I've danced this a hundred times. That's a lot of times. I kind of wouldn't mind getting a hush out of their hand, but then you know I could just let it die and then redeemer. I guess I'll just let it die and, and redeemer. Yeah, so like we'll be able to reset Vi, or they could have like expensive Celestial that they get from like Star Shaping and stuff. Love those kind of things. So 
So that's too bad. Don't get to redeem her. Can you improve perfection? I, I like the labs a whole lot. I usually play the labs for like the the bonus stream sub goals. If we uh, get to five uh, get to five subscribers during a day, then we'll do that for our bonus uh, stream time. Um, and then I'm also recording some of the labs off stream and posting them up onto YouTube like a, a run in at legendary. I've trained my whole life for this. Redeemer hit Redeemer. Redeemer going infinite. And they've as you can tell, they've they've just had hush. They're just keeping hush available at all times. So I'll kill the droplet, but I got another droplet. RV. Harvey's <laughs> giving somebody the side eye. <laughs> She's it's time to growl at somebody. Yeah, the, the labs, the single player labs is, is a lot of fun. I really enjoy playing those. Vanguard Redeemer has been pretty cool, but we haven't really gotten a good Vanguard Redeemer, right? Every card that we've drawn for Vanguard Redeemer has cost the same or less, right? Like, we haven't hit... You know, we haven't drawn an Aurelia or a Jarvan or a, or, um, a Screeching Dragon or King Jarvan or anything, like, super cool. There's the hush they were holding. Hmm. Are you chill trying to kill my Aurelia? I'm chill. Forget, but to remember. Um. Hmm. So I kind of want to get that thing out of here first. But then that lets them play the Vi. Yeah, assume they just survive combat here, block like the Vanguard Redeemer. Then Vi is a really good blocker. I 
Does let me get this blade surge right away though, right? Because like if I if I play the flawless du duet, it's slow speed. This thing's slow speed. Um, they could you know get excited, kill Aurelia. Which I guess at that point I would just play new Aurelia. Oh, they just don't have to block, do they? I guess I don't get I don't get to blade surge. Because they just don't block. I was thinking that like they play a blocker and whichever one they block, I blade surge the other one. But they just don't block. Killing their unit though. Screeching Dragon. Here comes the punchline. I don't need a plan. Eat this. <laughs> That's how we do it. My homeland. Today we turn the tide of war. Finally! Alright, Vanguard Redeemer. Getting us something special. With Jarvan. I don't think they'll have judgment. That'd be kind of bad if they did have judgment. There we go. Raise our banners. Demacia prevails. So yeah, so like I know I had like the multiple blade dances, but I want to be really careful with the blade dances. Okay, so my opponent was at six. I Yeah, so they have I had the three blades and then the four three. And so if I swap the 4-3 with a 1-1 one, one with a blade, um, then I'm doing 6 damage to them. And for some reason in my head, I was thinking Aurelia was 3 damage. And so I was adding it as like 3 plus, you know, plus 1 plus 1, so 5 total. And so it wasn't going to be lethal. But yeah, so with having, you know, the second... So yes, I should have switched, because then I am presenting lethal and I have the second blade dance. Um, or like the second blade surge. So I, I had it in my mind that I was putting them down to one, and so therefore I was gonna I still wanted to save the blade surge, but yeah. Yeah, so if I if we if we would have if we would so we just drew the lead and follow there. And so like with the Jarvan, so we just put Jarvan to play with the attack, but if you lead and follow if you have the mana, if you lead and follow and pick Jarvan back up like the next round, and um and then cast the flawless duet and blade dance, Jarvan will come in with the blade dance. Attack, so we can have our Jarvan attack on their turn, also. So that's what we're kind of thinking, like with this deck of like Blade Dance with Jarvan. Um, it never really like we didn't have Jarvan in our hand hardly ever, so it never, we never really were able to do it. But yeah, that was going to be like on their turn, you know, like Ribbit Dancer or you know something like that, and get a Jarvan in play. Like that could have been a really cool surprise. Yeah, so that's kind of the premise of the deck. Yep, yep. Get Jarvan, Jarvan Blade Dancing. But there we go. So still finished with the two and three. Not too bad for, you know, just kind of building a, a brand new deck today. 
and putting it together, I think, you know, not too bad. You know, I think that we didn't necessarily draw our top end too much, right? Like we had like a lot of games where we just had too much of the small stuff. And we, we got ahead, like two of those three losses, we were pretty far ahead. We just couldn't close out the deal. Um, and I think that that, you know, having another Screeching Dragon or Jarvan or, you know, something like that in, in like the two of those three losses could have maybe turned it around. But I like the Vanguard Redeemer. Um, sometimes we're just drawing way too many like you know we had just our late games just drawing all droplets right like that happened a couple of those times and you know maybe if one of those droplets was something more powerful we would have gotten it but that was pretty cool there we go so just more trying to find more ways to play aurelia that's not just sand soldiers it's it's tough right like aurelia is kind of just all about sand soldiers so it's not easy finding other regions to play aurelia with but i think this one worked out fairly well i think it did all right, but that's going to be it here for Aurelia Jarvin. So those of y'all watching later on YouTube, hit that like button over there. And feel free to leave those comments. I know Puppy will really, really be happy about that. Isn't that right, Puppy? Oh, yes, that's right. Yep, see, that's what Puppy said. She wants to see those uh, comments over there on YouTube. They help out the uh, videos, and we appreciate them. All right, but thank you so much for watching some Aurelia Jarvin, and I'll see you for the next video.